Friday, TGIF here in Quarantine Cuisine, and I have, uh, I don't know about you, but I am ready for the weekend. It's been a long week. It's been fun at five o'clock, but we are ready for the weekend. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We have an incredible guest on tonight. We have Bobby Maximus. He is a dear friend of ours, and we've gotten to know each other through Instagram and through, um, I did his podcast last week, and he is such a cool guy. He's a former UFC fighter. I mean, he's a badass when I say that. And also, he writes for Men's Health. He wants to be a Food Network star because he is a really great home chef. So Food Network, call him. He's pretty cool. And also, he's a great family man. He's a proud Canadian, and we can't wait to have him on the show. Tonight, what I'm making is I'm making stuffed shells. And we love this in our household. We love anything with pasta. And I know Bobby likes pasta too. He was talking about his grandmother and growing up with a lot of pasta around him. And um, so I decided I would make stuffed shells tonight with a spinach and ricotta filling. Now, I want you to come over here because I, uh, I have some in the oven. Now, my 12 year old, Cage, who is such an incredible, he is a fierce beast in the kitchen. Isn't Let me he tell 13 you. Now? 13, that's right. He's a teenager now. Gavin is 12. I keep wanting to say he, I don't want Gavin him to get to become a teenager yet. So he is 13. He's a beast in the kitchen. He actually stuffed these with me earlier. Look at that. Is that not that so good? Amazing. And so we're going to put some shrimp scampi. I think we're going to do a little shrimp scampi later with it. Cage is making a, uh, a riette, a salmon riette out of my book. Which, what book was that? Was it Cookie from the Hip? Cookie from the Hip. There's Cage right there. You guys, say hi, Cage. Hey everybody, I'm telling you, he is That's I'm his him, knife. Yeah, that's his knife. I'm teaching him everything he knows, and by the time he gets to be 15, maybe, and this one, oh, yeah. by the time he becomes 15, he's going to be bypassing me, Gordon Ramsay, Thomas Keller, like everybody. So he actually told us how to, he told us, he prepped this whole meal right he now. He actually prepped everything with me. I mean, I was like, hey, hey, Thatcher. And then, um, we, I mean, it's kid-centric around here. We love it. So we're going to have a great weekend. So stuffed shells. So what I did was, let I me mean, go over the ingredients. What we did, Cage and I, we have some mozzarella. He actually grated it on a, on a, um, a grater, what is like a box grater. So box grated some fresh mozzarella. We have ricotta cheese here. I'm using dried oregano because I ran out of fresh. And some Parmesan cheese, marinara sauce. And I actually made this garlic oil um, a few days ago, right? I made it for a pizza, it two, right? For Leo or it. for Jacques? I can't remember. Leo, Leo or Jacques. Leo, maybe. Yeah, I think it yeah. might have been Leo or Jacques. And I just kept, I made a big batch. Oh, I think so you I made that one. It. You made one for Leo, but you made that one for Jacques. Yeah. The so, leftover. Yeah. So I just keep it in the fridge and I pull it out and I use it. And we use that right cage to, to saute some mm -hmm. of the spinach. And then we just mix it up. But I use, we use most of it, but I wanted to keep a few pieces out to show you guys what we did when the stu the stuffing part. So what you want to do is get a glass dish or a baking dish of some kind. We put marinara in the bottom, as you can see. I want to show you that again. So marinara is in the bottom part, right? And then what we did was, once we stuffed the shells, we just layer them, a single layer, right on, the, right on top of the marinara sauce, put another layer of marinara and then some more mozzarella cheese, cover it, bake it, 20 minutes and then uncover it and bake it for another 15 so it gets nice and brown. You look so pretty in that oh, dress. Oh, little dress. You got um, Teresa commit. said she made garlic, um, extra virgin olive oil for her pizza always. She always I, does it's that. It's just, it's the best. And, and you Carol know, says hi from New Jersey. Hey, Carol from New Jersey. You can always keep it in the fridge. You just cover it, keep it in the fridge. And then pull it out when you want to use it. So that's what we've been doing all week, and I love doing that as well. Bobby, so, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Bobby on. I just saw him. Bobby, let's go. Bobby Maximus in the house, former UFC fighter. He is ripped. Let me tell you, you talked about a beast in the gym. Hey, what's up? Hey, buddy? how are you? I'm great, man. We have been waiting for you. It's so good to talk to you today. Yeah, you too. Oh, we're so happy it's Friday. I don't know about you, but how's, you know, I'm sure you're homeschooling too and you guys have it going on. So are you excited it's Friday for the weekend? Yeah, I don't even know. Tell you the truth. I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> All my days blend together. So <laughs> it's, it's, so uh, true. it's Friday, Sunday, Monday. I have no idea anymore. It's one of those days. Anything that ends with a Y. It's one of those That's days right. that ends with a Y, right? <laughs> For sure. So what, look, so Bobby, I decided because I knew you were coming on and you love pasta. I decided we decided to make stuffed shells, and right behind Nicole is our beast of a chef, our 13-year-old yeah. cage. I know you have your kids cook too, and they 
they help a lot. So the cage. Yeah. Yeah, I I I love that's one thing I love about you know what you're doing is you get your kids involved. I, I think it's really important to teach kids to cook and the value of food and, and I think it's something really fun for the creative little brains too. Parents are always looking for coloring books and Legos and activities and stuff, but I, I think one of the best creative activities you can do is just cooking in the kitchen. It's cooking in the kitchen. I agree. And I'll tell you we have um, I'll say Cage is really the most fiercest one, but we have Gavin who cooks. He's got a great palate. Thatcher comes in and cooks sometimes. We have all of our, you got to put a shirt on that if you're going to be on live Instagram. <laughs> we have six boys running around. It's like Lord of the Flies around here. <laughs> so Jonas will cook if Cage is cooking. Yeah. 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 The boys come in, when they see Cage cooking, they don't want to miss out on anything. So yeah. they're like, oh, I'm cooking now. <laughs> so. He gets them motivated around here. So tell us, Bobby, tell everybody that's listening. I know that you are really great. We see your Instagram all the time. We're always looking at posts. There's Thatcher. Say hi, Thatcher. That's Bobby. Hey, Maxson. how are you? So Thatcher, so um, tell us about your regimen every day. We're always looking at like what you're eating. You're like high protein. You definitely carb up and you can carb load because you're a big guy. You're muscular. You need that. Carb you lighting. had a funny. You had a funny saying. What was it again, honey? We were, like, we were reading it. It was something like, um, "Protein. I need protein, but but carbs, carbs make me happy." Or something. You yeah, yeah. steak. Up. Steak makes people strong. Pasta makes them happy. Yes, yes. that's it. I love that. That's a really good saying. Uh, that's a really good saying. So tell us, tell everybody out there, what is your regimen and what? Give us three tips for people at home right now that they can do very simply. If they don't have a gym and they don't have at home or they don't have exercise equipment, what are three tips you can give people at home right now that are quarantining to stay in shape? Yeah, so there's there's three things actually. The first one's eight hours sleep a night. Nothing can make up for that. Um, I always say that an extra hour of sleep is the most rejuvenating, anabolic, uh, fat burning, toning, whatever word you want to use. That's the best thing you could do. Eight hours of interrupted sleep. The next one, when it comes to eating, is I'm a big believer in eating whatever you want. Food shouldn't be classified as good or bad. You shouldn't yeah. have feelings associated with it. But there's a caveat to that. And you have to eat real food. So the closer to nature, the better. My Italian grandma, she said to me, well, isn't bread good for you? And I said, well, <laughs> the, bread, the bread that you make with yeast and flour and olive oil and water and salt, that's good for you. But a, a loaf of Wonder Bread that's not bread. So if you right. can institute that rule across the board, like one thing I tell people is if you want ice cream, eat all the ice cream you want, but have an ice cream maker at home or buy something like salt and straw or haagen dazs that's got four ingredients. Don't eat those yeah. big two gallon tubs of ice cream that are filled with chemicals and air. And, and the third thing, right and yeah. And everyone thinks that I'm into hardcore working out. And, and while that's kind of true, you don't need to do that. You just need to move every day. So find yeah. an activity that you love. I think we all look at the gym as a, as a chore or something we have to do. If you love gardening, let gardening be your workout. If you love landscaping, let it be landscaping. If you love Zumba, let it be Zumba. It might just be taking your kids for a walk every night for an hour and, and unwinding and getting away from technology. So if you could do those three things, fitness is actually pretty easy. This yeah. is my little gap here. Oh, amazing. Oh, I love those tips. And I always tell people, too, that you can't exercise off a bad diet. Like, it goes hand in hand. And you do have to, I believe, in eating everything, you know, whatever you want in moderation. But there also has to be activity with that. Yep. So I agree with that wholeheartedly because I always believe that it's a lifestyle. You're not, it's not a diet. It's not a diet. I eat everything I want. I don't exercise. Then I get into a rut. Then I, you know, am not feeling my best or I'm not feeling good about myself. And so now I'm going to diet it off and then I'm going to start wash and repeat. So I always try to say to people, it's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle to get into as, as soon as you possibly can for a lifetime. And so do you agree with that philosophy? Yeah, for sure. Like it, it's it's one thing I tell people is self care is not a special thing. It, it, being active and eating good food is like brushing your teeth. Yeah. You know, like it's I just agree. not. Uh, 
Did I lose my sound? A little bit, but we get <laughs> yeah. a little. Okay, I should be back now. There we um, go. There we go. Now I can hear the, you loud and clear. The eating, eating good food and exercising, and I'm not even going to call it exercising. I'll just call it activity and moving. Activity. I like that. It's, it's, it's basic self-care, like brushing your teeth. It's not yes. something we've, we've turned into society that you get rewarded somehow for eating healthy. You get punished for eating, quote, unquote, unhealthy. Right. And exercise is some special thing. You only do three days a week. No, every yeah. day, just eat food that's close to nature and then move around a little bit. And then the it's action. fun. It's part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that idea because I think that, we do. I think so many of us get so much in our head about, you know, um, it has to be this and it has to be regimented and it has to be that. But I love that philosophy allowing that allows people freedom and a little liberty around, you know, being active and not putting it in a box and one size fits all because one size doesn't fit all for our bodies. I mean, it just doesn't. What works for me might not work for somebody else, may not work for somebody else. So I think it's such great advice. Now, I know you love to cook. You cook a lot. I know you would love to be on Food Network, from what I hear. We put out a yes. casting call. We put out a casting call. So, Food Network, call Bobby. He's amazing. Hook me up. I, I, would, I would, if I wasn't in fitness, I mean, if the Food Network called me, I might quit this whole fitness thing. That, that would be, I mean, working out something I love, but food is, is it's pretty much an equal. Well, you know, I want to tell you this. It's so funny that you said that because I started out in fitness too. I don't know if you know that or not, but I started out getting a degree in exercise physiology and nutrition and, and when, I was, when I went to college. And I started in cardiac rehab and I was doing personal training and I was doing a lot of that. And then I parlayed that into food, which was, amazing, which was my first love. And so it was really cool because, you know, it's kind of that same route. So I did that, obviously. And it's actually today, in today's world, it goes hand in hand. So something you do, you have so much knowledge anyway about your body and great advice for other people and just parlaying that and you cook and parlaying that and bringing that together could be an incredible show for you. So What's it called? Well, and Play I, it. I, think, I think they do to go, go together because you can't. There's, there's this saying that you can't outwork a bad diet. But yeah. the I'm other saying. side of the coin is you can't yeah. outeat a bad work ethic either. So That's if true. you're not active, you can't fix it in the kitchen. The two, they're married. They live together. It's, 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 I believe it's hand in hand. I believe you really have to have both. And you have to you know, really have that balance of activity and, and eating. Play it one, two, three, four said it's good to be healthy on the inside and the outside. Like both. Yeah, for sure. And Absolutely. the other thing is it doesn't it doesn't have to be that hard. Like what I what I want people to know is it doesn't have to be a regiment. You can enjoy yourself. So if you find yourself at a world class restaurant, eat the food and enjoy. If you stay active and you know just watch what you put in your mouth a little bit you can do that. You don't have to do without. I, I completely agree with you on that. I think we and I are on the, both the same exact page with fitness and food and, and health and wellness because it's one of my, that's the platform I've always come on is based on health and wellness. Tell us about what is your, what are, what are your, first of all, how are you and your family doing in quarantine? How is that going for your family? And do you have any tips out there for people that are, you know, just staying sane during this time besides, you know, working out or exercise or staying active or eating, anything else that is working for you and your family? Yeah, the, the number one tip, we're doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, we're yeah. doing really well, but I'm, I'm a family man and a, and a homebody. And so it's, it's, it's refreshing for me. But the number one thing I would remind people of is it's okay to have boundaries. You don't have to be in each other's space 24 seven 365 if you want to go in the basement and be by yourself and watch a show that's okay if you need to get out and take a walk to clear your mind yeah that's okay it's okay to feel bad and it's okay to do something about it right right i love that i love that yeah i think personal space and taking you know we all have our little you know nooks and crannies around here of the little spaces we go to you know if i feel like i feel you know i love to you know, do something active every day. We all do. We're a pretty active family, but also just putting on your 
you know, your ear pods or something and just listening to some music right now and just kind of escaping is a good way to do it. Just sit, sit down and kind of go away or go, you know, read let's see, let's see who whatever. has bigger guns right now. And you just did a workout wow. before this. I did I a saw little bit of a workout today, Bobby, just for you. Oh yeah. Look at that. Looking strong. That's not bad. I like that. I'm loving I that. I knew this, but I want to tell you this great story. I don't know if a lot, a lot of the, our community knows this. I was, I actually did regional bodybuilding when I was 19 years old. And, um, I went to, you know, I did the bodybuilding events. I won trophies like this tall. And, you know, I was in the small category, obviously. <laughs> it's a very small category. <laughs> but it was so fun. But my mom was like, um, she told me later in life, she goes, you have no, because my parents supported me no matter what I did, whether it was playing softball or whether it was going, you know, cheerleading or whether it was bodybuilding. And they, she would tell me later, she goes, it was like watching paint dry when we <laughs> bodybuilding competitions. <laughs> that's anyway, so that's funny. just a funny story because it was just it was just a crazy time in my life. But it is hardcore, so I know all about carving up, carving down, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, I did that. But it was it's a did you have to do that when you were competing? Were you ever afraid in a in a fight? That's a good question. P pardon, I didn't hear that. Oh, sorry. Were you ever afraid in a fight? Like, yeah, when you were I've fighting? actually, it, it's, it's funny. I've been in a, afraid in any fight I've ever been in, really yeah. any professional endeavor, because I care. And I think yeah. that if, if you, here's a good example with cooking. I know how to make a good spaghetti sauce. I was trained by my Italian grandmother. I made it every Sunday for my whole life. If you told me, to make that in the Iron Chef kitchen, I would be scared to death because it would be important to me to do well and I would care. And so I think that Absolutely. anything that you do that you really love when you're put on stage, you should be a little afraid. And I think yeah. we all look at, at fear as a negative thing, but I think it's healthy. Oh, I think it's great. I think it makes us more vulnerable. I do think that it makes you more passionate. I mean, I was nervous every single time I, I don't care. I did it. I did Iron Chef for so many years and so many seasons that every single time from the first battle to the last battle, I was nervous every time. And I made sure that I prepared as much as I could mentally um, to go in there and not knowing, you know, what we were going to be faced with or who I was going to be faced with. But it was really cool because I do agree. That's great advice. I know. I remember never. I always remember Oprah telling me one time, she said, Kat, you know what? The day that I stopped being nervous about going on my talk show, that's when she was still doing her talk show. She did it for 25 years. The day that I walk out there and I'm not nervous is the day that I need to wrap it up. She goes, because that just means that I'm not passionate about it anymore. And I just thought that was such great advice because I do believe those butterflies you feel and that, that pa is, that's passion. That's like, I just want to do really well. I want to, I want to, I want to make sure that I'm putting my best efforts forward and going out and killing it every time. And, and being a good sport about it and all of the things that go with that. So I love that advice. I think that's great, especially listen, young kids that may be listening or parents that might be listening that want to, you know, forward that information to your teenagers or your kids. It's okay to be scared. If you're nervous, that's a good thing. I always tell my kids all the time when they say I'm nervous about a test. Or I'm nervous. That's great. That means that you're alert, you're awake, you're aware, and you're going to go in there and you're going to try to kill it when you, when you get in there. So I think that's, a, that's incredible advice. Um, how is, how, what, what's next for you, Bobby, when we resume life again, uh, what's next? You know, I, I want to just continue to try to help people be better and enjoy their lives more. And I really think through exercise and through food, oh, that looks good. Um, yeah. I, I really think through exercise and food, people, uh, people can live a really happy life because we don't. I lost my dad when I was 20 and it taught me a lesson that we don't have a lot of time left in, in, in this world. Like your ticket could get punched tomorrow. So right. eat a good meal, be healthy, be happy. And for all the people out there that are younger, that don't think this applies to them. One day you're going to be 60. One day you're going to be 70 and you want to be in a position to enjoy it. I, I look at my Italian grandmother. She's 91 years old. She cooks her own food. She goes to the market on her own. She walks every day. That's how I want to be at 91. And yes, so if, if, I can, 
if I can lead by example in that regard, then that's my goal and just give back in some way. That's amazing. I love that. What do you think, um, Bobby, this is teaching us? Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a massive reset for people to focus on their passions. One of the, uh, I do some corporate coaching with corporate executives and I always ask them a question. What did you really want to do with your life? Because nobody wants to work at a desk all day. Nobody wants to slave away for 12 hours a day. What was your passion? And for some people it's painting watercolors. For some people it's cooking. For some people it's uh, maybe gardening. So now that you've had time to do that, don't ever let that go. When you get back to the real world, make sure you take time every day to do something you really love. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. I think this is a time when people can do a lot of reflection. They can do a lot of self evaluation. They can do a lot of, you know, as I always say, it's an inside job. We do a lot of work inside. Right now, we have a lot of time on our hands that we can do that. And um, I, I love that. I love it. I love that you said that. I'm going to pull this out. This is a uh, Cajun. I made this uh, for you and your grandmother, Bobby. So we, we made this. We made some stuffed shells for you guys. It's for you guys tonight. Oh, I love that. Now, I, I, I saw you when I logged in. You were making some garlic olive oil. Yes. So I just made this the other day. I used it um, when I had Jacques Pepin on. I made it um, because he talked about his memories, and I kind of – did an homage, I did it, the whole dinner was around some of his memories, some of his memories with his mother. And one of the things he said was, she made these beautiful fingerling potatoes in this brown butter and she got them really nice and crisp and they'd come right out of the garden so they were still warm. And she made this garlic oil on escarole salad. And so I recreated that. And so it was, it was that kind of thing that, so I was inspired to just make a big batch of garlic oil and um, I've been using it all week. So it's really easy. You just put some garlic cloves and some oil, bring it up to a little simmer um, on the stove. It's about a cup of oil, or if you want to double it, you can do two cups. And I think I have like, I don't know, two, four, eight garlic cloves in it and just make a real fragrant. The more garlic you add, the more garlicky it'll be and the less. So you can do it, whatever is your taste that you like. I love a lot of garlic, so I put, you know, a cup with like eight nine or ten garlic in there. So kind of come to room temperature and you can use it for anything. So we use it tonight for the spinach that went into the spinach and ricotta stuffing. Man, that looks so good. I'm, I'm you're making me hungry now. <laughs> well, listen, we love watching you at your Instagram and looking at what you're making. I love seeing these big, like, tri-tips and ribs and like these big honking like prime ribs <laughs> it's so cool to see it you get a flank steak on I there that's so I good love it, man. You're, you're so you cool. know i'm i'm just i'm just trying to learn as much as i can so it's funny i go i go through phases so at one yeah. point you might see me cooking nothing but like like rice or you might see me cooking jamaican food or Portuguese food, or I just like learning about everything. So lately, I've been experimenting with smoking. So I've been, yes. I've been just trying to trying to learn everything I can. And I think that's the other piece of advice I would give people: never stop learning, because never everyone. Stop learning. I mean, we're never done learning. Somewhere. None of us are. And you know what? I'll give you a little tip. But my dad, when my dad was a, a master smoker, I mean, back in Mississippi, I was growing up. He not a smoke, cigarette smoker. Not a cigarette smoker. A smoke. We're talking about everybody out there. We're talking about smoking meats on the grill, <laughs> and um, he would smoke turkeys and briskets and tri tips, and he smoked everything on the grill. And he always used hickory. That was his go-to wood. I mean, I've used everything from apple wood to this to that. I mean, mesquite. He always used hickory, and it was always so delicious. I mean, it would just he would smoke these meats, and it was just amazing like uh, to die for so anyway he was a he was a master smoker so i got a lot of i was very lucky to grow up with someone who uh with all my, my both my parents and my grandmother um but never quit love that you're you're trying new things and you know keep honing those talents for that food network show that's going to happen i i gotta i gotta keep trying then 
the final thing Keep is going. don't be scared. I mean, don't, it's okay to be scared, but don't be scared to mess up. I don't show Ever. all the food. Yeah. I ruin. I don't show the food I ruin, but uh, Alton Brown, he posted something really funny the other day. It was like a burnt piece of pizza. And he just wrote, I don't want to talk about it. And I laughed <laughs> so hard because it's okay. Like everybody messes up. And if you mess up, what's the worst thing everybody. you learn? Learn. You know, I burn toast all the time. Still to this day, I used to be my parents used to know when I was home from college because I'd put to I'd always burn toast. I'd run to go do my hair or something when I get home from college and I put toast in and burn and set the alarms off. So I I still burn toast occasionally. Except and, you, uh, except you like it like that. I except I actually grew to like it. I think I, I think I've had a piece of burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kids have all tasted my burnt toast, especially. She turns them <laughs> over and makes believe they not like that and puts them on their plate. That's so funny. Well, Bobby, you're amazing. I'm so, Thank good. You. I'm so glad to know you, dude. And I can't wait until this is all over. We come to Canada, we have a meal together. You come to you come this way to the West Coast. Um, either way, you know, let's get together after this is all over. Let's keep talking offline and uh, keep cooking, man. You're awesome. No, for sure. And, and I wanted to tell you, you're an inspiration to me. I love your food um, and just love the kindness that you present yourself with. So thank you for that. Uh, of course. You got it, man. You got it. You're a good friend. And quit. And do me a favor. Talk yeah. to the people on the Mesa Burger Instagram and, and tell them to stop putting up pictures of those french fries. It, it, it kills me <laughs> every I time I see them. <laughs> they look so good. So it, it teases me. So unless you're going to send me some in the mail, no more posting pictures of them. We can try to do that. <laughs> we can try to send a uh, care package to you. But no matter what, after it's all over, you got to come to Mesa Burger. You bring your family, and you guys uh, can uh, we'll feed you. I will. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Right. Take bye care. Bye bye. All right. Well, there you have it, guys. Bobby Maximus, man, he is such a cool dude, and uh, I mean, literally, just uh, you guys have been incredible. I so let me recap the stuff. Show Shannon Russo. Hey, Shannon. Pollock says hello, hey, girl, and she's been up? talking throughout everything, and. Loving uh, what we're saying that. and agreeing on well, things. Well, what Cage and I did today was uh, we basically stuffed some shells. So Cage actually boiled the pasta for me. I was trying to get ready. I was behind the eight ball today, you guys. I was running at the last minute. I'm like, Cage, you gotta, you gotta bust it out, my my chef here. And I said, Cage, you gotta boil some pasta for me. You gotta help me prep. So he helped it. He but he boiled the pasta. He sautéed the spinach for me. Um, he he did it all. So he helped me get this ready and. To feed, we're feeding eight people, you guys. I mean, like, I need, I, yeah, he's a good, he's my, he's my teammate here. And so, basically, we just mix the ricotta. We have ricotta with mozzarella, parmesan. I did a little dry oregano because we didn't have any fresh left. The garlic oil, we sauteed the spinach in, and then we just topped it in marinara. So, we put everything in. We stuffed the shells with that spinach ricotta mixture, and then we put a layer of sauce on the bottom. Cage, line these up. Look how perfect they look. I mean, you could, I'd, I'd pay money for this in a restaurant. And, uh, and then sauced them and then put cheese on top of them. We popped them in the oven at three, I think it's like 375. I covered it and 400, something like that. We have the recipe on the website anyway. So catcore.com and uh, covered it. And then I uncovered it for about another 10, 15 minutes to let it get nice and crispy on top. So this is our stuffed um, ricotta and spinach uh, shells, and we're going to make a little, what are we we're throwing out? Cage made some uh, salmon riettes, which is just a little, if you guys have ha ever had like uh, like tuna, like how we chop up the tuna, really like a spicy tuna, um, crispy rice or something at a, a sushi place, you do the same thing with salmon. You just chop it up real fine, kind of mince it, and then you add it in yogurt, dill, salt, pepper, all those kind of good things. We're going to make some bagel chips. And uh, then we're going to make some shrimp scampi to go with this because we have a lot of frozen shrimp left over. We're going to make some shrimp scampi and like a white wine garlic sauce. And, uh, and then we're going to feed everybody, right, Kate? We're going to feed the army we have here. <laughs> so you guys are amazing. Thank God it's Friday. One, um, a few things. Yes. Like a few uh, Atonement 8 said, when I see you, Kat, um, I just – feel like going to kill it. it like makes me think of all my dreams coming true you're an inspiration uh, you're you a soul's you life every dream come true no doubt every dream right? bobby was sweet he signed off oh, so thank you thank you bobby maximus for being on yeah He's everybody is great. just 
saying hi from everywhere oh, and I love that. you're you're so radiant everybody's saying the oh, nicest things you guys are amazing i swear i have the best community of people and you guys lift us up and amplify us i hope we do the same for you every day um we've had a lot of amazing guests on this week we've had a lot of people telling us what this is teaching us and what in their opinion is teaching us always write us you guys write us i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna put a little challenge out right us and what you think this is teaching us because we want to hear from you um and i'm sending you big love and we're all sending you big food hugs from the core Ehrlich family here today we have great uh shows saturday tomorrow at five o'clock and sunday and i'm gonna see you live on monday 5 p.m pacific time same place same time quarantine cuisine Mwah.